Mona Lisa, so Mona Lisa is a transgender woman um, working with and for Transgender Equality Uganda, which is an organization that was started in 2012 to front issues of transgender women and transgender sex workers, because those are two different clusters of people. And we're basically doing work around promotion of human rights for transgender women, um, economic justice, um, institutional strengthening within our organizations because there has been a very big gap in terms of our leadership structures and um, yeah, our organization works on uh, HR, HR issues of uh, community to be specific because when it comes to programming also you tailor services that are for people that are transgender persons which is not general and uh, that caters for the kind of populations that we serve so we have services in there like um, HIV prevention and control services. And um, of late, we have embarked on a journey of carrying out GAHT, which is Gender Affirming Health Therapy for transgender women, for them to be able to actually um, get holistic services when it comes to SRHR services. Because we are not about HIV, but looking at a person in a whole. Our organization is strictly for transgender women and transgender sex workers. Uh, when it comes to a policy around that, no, we don't have a policy, but we normally embark on issues as they arise. So we have like sort of a direction or a strategic plan entails out how we deal with issues around health because um, HR issues are also health issues. So in their totality, we have um, our strategic plan or our programming that is around that, but I can't say it's a policy in itself. Um, when it comes to that also in our grant writing, because it's already in our strategic plan, so this is something that is thought of most times. So it does not affect us when it comes to how we then program for our communities around SR and HR. Since it's already in the strategic plan, it's very easy for you to draw from those objectives, what you sought out to achieve while you are making that plan to be able to program around SR and HR. So for us, when it comes to writing, it's not really a challenge. I look at people as holistic beings, even when services are being given. I'm not only affected by HIV, that, but there's so much that happens to me as a transgender person. So from uh, the perspective of HIV and HR, um, HR programming, it needs to have uh, integration in there, that you do not look at people as sexual beings per se, because H SR HR is about sexual reproductive health and rights. But we put in aspects of mental health, there are aspects of gender affirming hormonal therapy for the transgender women, and then the general population, how they see um, HIV being given to our communities is around, oh, go and get PEP, go and get PrEP. So we cascade and go beyond that. We look at giving services in their totality, and our integration is also beyond just HIV um, prevention giving of services, if one would put it like that. So what can an um, organization heads do around SRHR programming and vis-a-vis -vis HIV? So for me, the issue is around speak about issues. Let them be known. Advocate and say, yes, Donna, you're giving us the money to do this kind of work, but we're not only about HIV. So if you create that awareness and donors are able to know that there's a linkage, a relationship between SRHR giving of services and HIV, then also it makes them aware and their consciousness is raised around how then can we plan better for the communities. But if you never speak about issues, then they, be, they seem to be single-sided and not cross-cutting, which is false. If we were able to tap into the women's larger organizing, speak about organizations like AWDF, the CREA, Urgent Action Fund itself, that um, wants to see the diversity of persons coming into these spaces. So when we are speaking about women issues and talking about 16 days of activism, I see transgender women being incorporated and believed to be as women, because most times the challenge is that people do not seem to fathom 
and get to know that transgender women are actually women because this is an issue of identity. How do you identify? So if I come out and tell you that I'm a woman, who are you to say no to that? So for me, around uniting and solidifying our communities is around people getting to appreciate that transgender women are women and then we can move to the discussion of talking about activism because activism in itself without acknowledging transgender persons to me is a bedrock of not doing anything because you leave us out of the programming and yet we are supposed to be part of the programming and be included and not only as recipients of services. So trying to assert ourselves into the broader women's communities I would also go back to saying that sometimes you think that people know, but they don't. So there's always um, an opportunity for us to engage with the larger women's spaces and let them know that transgender women are women. Because if people do not believe that you are a woman, you do not assert yourself in spaces, then you're not doing anything. People will not come to you. Sometimes you have to take the initiative of going to them so for us as an organization it has been about saying that hey we are here we are vocal when it comes online and do these hashtags amazing um twitter handles and spaces that we are part of to sort of create the visibility about the kind of persons that we are as transgender women and i'm sure technology has given us a greater advantage than other communities have ever gotten before because you tweet one thing and it causes um, traffic, it creates jam online. So that tapping into the technological aspects in how we visibilize our issues has been one of the easiest ways because of also the volatile environment that we operate in to be able to voice out for the transgender community at large. Hmm. So for the longest time ever, um, I don't know if it's being a devil's advocate of sorts or what, but we thought of a space where we could also belong. And when you speak about equality, equality could mean so many things to so many different people. So for me, if one time I'm able to plan for you around, if you're celebrating Ida Hobbit and we bring on the trans men, to me that is a sense of equality. So why we are saying that we focus on transgender women and transgender sex workers who are still female is because we wanted to create a space for us to belong as we as the women. And not to be patriarchal in a sense, but most times when men have faces, they tend to make other persons not shine. So for us to be able to shine in our space, it was an affirmative action to be able to include only transgender women within our programming, but we acknowledge and bring them on board at certain occasions. And it's not exclusion, but it's an affirmative action for us as an organization. So my parting note as, um, as a transgender woman living and operating in Uganda in a volatile environment, in such times, we need the donor community to actually come in solidarity with us, not only with the T's, but with the whole spectrum from the L's, the B's, the Q's, and the T's. Because when violence happens, when policies and laws are, are passed around criminalizing the kind of people that we are, it does not take a lesbian docket, a trans docket, but it brings us all together. And I'm calling upon all donors and allies and partners within these spaces to actually come in and fund more support because sometimes when we look at resources we only think about money but it goes beyond that at a time like this we need your expertise your technical knowledge at things to be able to counteract the noise that is happening at a time like this when noise is happening around the anti-gay lobby coming back in uganda which we need to challenge as a solidified force and that cannot be done alone thank you